Israel completes the line. And they're all in. They're off with Grand Alliance Mauve Jacket, the slowest to get out of the stalls for the Group 2 Princess of Wales' stake, sponsored by the Kingdom of Bahrain and Global Storm uh, White Cap, bustled up early by James Doyle to adopt the front running role to Isra, the striped cap, and Adair and Will Buick in the all blue. And from a sluggish start, Grand Alliance drops in last of the quartet as they move towards the end of the first quarter mile. And it's the Godolphin pair who are the first half of the field early. Global Storm leading the prohibitively prized favorite and former derby winner, Adair. Isra tracking the Godolphin duo. And Grand Alliance cast a little adrift at this stage. He's six or seven lengths behind the others. And just not really picking up the bit as they swing round into the Bunbury Mile and complete the first third of the contest. Global Storm leading them down towards the seven marker. Tracked by Adea, Isra slipstreaming and Grand Alliance. And it's single file stuff and they spurn the running rail, drifting more towards the center of the tracker, approaching halfway at a fairly generous 38 miles an hour or so. They're around about 12 seconds for the last furlong. Still, Grand Alliance adrift of his three rivals as Global Storm leads Adea and Isra, the striped cap, waiting in the wings as they move inside the last five furlongs on down to the final half mile of the Group 2 Princess of Wales' stakes. Global Storm ensuring this has been a good test of the trip. They're still nudging 40 miles an hour. Adea in the all blue, poised, still swinging away in the hands of Will Buick. Isra making his effort now as Adea comes sweeping on by and moves through to take over. Coming down inside the final two and a half furlongs. Adea asked a stretch by Buick. Isra, though, is going with him out on the right. They've quickly dropped Global Storm. There's been nothing at all from Grand Alliance. And Adea is now having to work. And Isra is looking threatening as they race down into the dip. And Isra knows is ahead. Adea really having to work here as they climb inside the furlong and Isra is beginning to assert Adea leaning left he can't offer anything else and he looks leg weary close home and Isra is powering away gonna be eased close home by Jim Crowley Isra wins the Princess of Wales stakes and turns over Adea Global Storm in third and Grand Alliance in fourth John Gosson and I were just admiring this beautiful cup um, for the Princess of Wales' stakes. Um, beautiful it is as well. And Isra has just won it for his owner, Shaker Hissa. Congratulations. That must have been a pleasant surprise, I'd imagine. Yeah, I think everyone thought we were running to be second. And uh, they've gone very strong fractions. It was not falsely run. I think they're a tick off the track record, 227 and change. So, no, great performance. He, he, he coped with the ground, which was fast enough for him. But it's in beautiful condition, the track. It's not been raced on since last year, so it's pristine condition. And coming here, what, we, what did you make of his last run? Did you feel that he hadn't quite shown what he was capable of just yet? No, no, it was a mistake. To, we thought he'd stay, but he, remember, he is by Muhara, who's a sprinter, and he's out, uh, Muhara's out of a Linux mare, so you get stamina. On the other hand, you know, Takaruda was uh, a mile and a half winning King George's and Oaks. So we made a mistake there. We wanted to see whether he go that distance. He didn't see out the last part. And beaten by an exceptionally good stayer who, who won at York in blistering style, if people remember last year, by about 20 lengths. So he ran well and then went back to a mile and a half here. We entered the race. We couldn't believe there were just so few entries. So no matter what, we've got the run here to support the race. And, and it's very much gone our way. So what would be the plan now? I notice you haven't got any entries for him. So where might you go? Well, he's won a group two now, which, you know, it leaves me a little bit looking. I don't want to go rushing into a King George. He's just put a huge effort in today, nearly breaking track record. So that would be a terrible mistake. You get, get caught on the bounce there, as they say. But we'll just look carefully at the program book. He handles everything from good to firm to soft. So he's pretty versatile. Just the trainer needs to get his thinking cap on now. So is this as far as he wants to go, do you yes. think? Yes, absolutely. You know, Thady and I discussed it, and we thought, we'll put him in this race. It'll suit. The timing's good. We didn't go to Ascot with him. It's tough to go to Royal Ascot and here, have a hard race at Ascot and be at this meeting. So we brought him here fresh. Chekis has got a strong hand in this area. He's obviously got Mustardef as well. Is he on course for the International? Yeah, that's the plan. He goes to the International, which 
he should enjoy York. He likes to play around before the races, a bit like Stradivarius used to. <laughs> and uh, no, he'll be, he'll be going there, and you know we're very happy with him. We look, he, we had to space his races. He, you know, he ran in 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 the Neon Cup, which he won in Saudi at the end of February, and then he's come back, and then he went to the Shima Classic in March and took on the world champion and tried to race with him, which was a mistake. And back to a mile and a quarter, and he shows what he could do in the Prince of Wales. And he's come out of it really well. You've been happy with everything. No, he's done? super, very playful, very full of himself every morning. And Emily Upjohn, yeah. I, I got your reaction immediately after her fine second in the eclipse. You were thinking about the King George. How is it after you've had yeah, a few so days? Right. After a race like that, she said it's a tough race. You don't go and say oh, we're definitely going here. Couldn't be more thrilled. She ate her three bowls of feed that night. Out the next morning playing and pick a grass and in great form in herself. Trotted and had to canter again quickly. She was bucking and mucking about. So I'm very pleased with her and there's no reason at this stage that she wouldn't wouldn't be going to a King George. Excellent stuff. I look forward to that. Many congratulations on this win. Thanks. Thank you. Well when Jim Crowley and I last chatted, we were wondering how he was going to win the Princess of Wales' stakes, well he has, on his run. Congratulations. Talk me through it from your perspective. Well, it went, it went relatively easy. Obviously, I wanted to make it a nice, even test. I thought, obviously, they had a pacemaker in the race. I went to go and sit second, and I just felt early on I would have been really forcing my horse to have sat second, and William was quite keen. We were going a nice, even tempo. I then just had to make sure that I was close to him, and, and I wanted to get racing sooner rather than later with him. I didn't want to let him go and then try and make up ground. I was also a little bit worried that the ground might be a fraction quick for him so I really didn't want Nadia to get away from me so I went to him early and as soon as we got upside you know I, I knew we were gonna, weren't going to come off second best so you could already set, 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 I suppose, sense the weakness in your rival yeah for sure yeah yeah as soon as we drew upside to him I, I, I knew it was going to go one way and the ground in the end was he okay on it yeah he, he was actually fine on it he's actually reasonably versatile I thought uh, he's won on all sorts of ground he's won a heavy soft he's got a bit of a, a round action um, so, like I said, I think a perfect scenario is just good ground for him. But he handled that fine today, and it was a good time. What do you think John could do with him now? I mean, it, this has come as a bit of a surprise, I suppose, a group two win. Big surprise. Um, I don't know if they'll supplement him, but look, those mile and a half races are, are his thing, and he's not too ground dependent. And I think, like I said, even come the autumn, it's a nice race. But obviously, whether they'd look at King George, I don't know. Uh, a bit quick, I think John's saying. Quite possibly, yeah. And we've also got Huckham in the race, so that's going to come around very quick. So, there's plenty of nice races for him. Well, congratulations on the surprise win. Well done. A double on the day. Well done. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Subscribe to Racing TV's YouTube channel now to watch more great races like this.